This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And it's Sadie's night, and everybody get excited. Everybody start clapping slowly. (laughs) And then faster, faster, you know the rest. Yeah. Because it's going to be good. (laughs) Right? Yeah, it's it's going to be amazing. Worthy of a slow clap? (laughs) Always. (laughs) I'll be the judge of that. What do you got tonight, Eck? This is the story of serial killer Richard Ivonitz. Ooh, a serial killer, eh? Mm-hmm. On September 9th, 1996, 16-year-old Sophia Silva vanished. She was last seen by her sister sitting on the porch of her Spotsylvania County, Virginia home. Sophia had just come home from school and had decided to have a snack and do her homework on the front porch. Her older sister was inside at the time and did not hear or see anything. Whoever took Sophia did so quietly without a struggle. No. So uh, uh, her sister was home and she just whoop mm-hmm. After in, the bro- in broad daylight. Broad daylight. Fuck this story already. Thank you. Yep. Police did their best to find the girl and launched a massive search, but were unable to find any trace of Sophia. Six weeks would pass before Sophia's body was found in a marsh about 20 miles from her home. Her body was wrapped in a white blanket, and her pubic hair had been shaved off. An autopsy would show she had been strangled or suffocated to death. Mm. As detectives processed the crime scene, they were able to collect DNA samples, including hairs left behind that did not belong to Sophia, but they were not able to match the DNA to anyone known to the police. Mm-hmm. After processing any leads and looking at all the evidence, there wasn't anything that led them to her killer. Son of a bitch. Less than a year later, on May 1st, 1997, in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is not far from where Sophia lived, Ron Lisk came home from work to find his daughters, 15-year-old Kristen and 12-year-old Katie, not home. Mm-mm. This was very unusual. They usually would come straight home from school and then call him when they arrived. When he hadn't heard from them that day and wasn't able to reach them on the phone, Ron left work early and drove the 20 minutes to his house. He found Kristen's book bag in the front yard, her math book nearby. Katie's book bag was inside the house, so he knew that they had made it home from school, but no other sign of the girls were found. Hmm. After checking with friends and neighbors who hadn't seen them, he called the police. Mm -hmm. Just like Sophia, they seemed to have simply vanished. Uh, Authorities immediately suspected they had been abducted and were able to see the similarities between the missing sisters and Sophia's case. Ooh, right away. I mean, I think because it was so close together Mm -hmm. yeah, and nearby and exact same MO. Yep. Yeah. Good. Despite a large search that included more than 1,500 people, no sign of the girls were found. Five days after they disappeared, Kristen and Katie's bodies were discovered under a bridge, partly submerged in a river, over 40 miles away. Ugh, both of them. Both of them. Oh, no. Both of them. That's super duper fucking awful. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I couldn't find a lot about the girls, any of these girls' personalities, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can just imagine. No, we sweet don't. angels on Two this earth that got pre teenage sisters. Fuck mm-hmm. that. Yep. Just like Sophia, they had their pubic hair shaved and then they had been drowned. Mm-hmm. The autopsy showed that the water in their lungs was not from a natural body of water like the river they'd been found in, but was regular tap water. Hmm. They believed that they had been drowned in a bathtub before being dumped into the river. Yep. 
in what can only be described, these are my words, the hugest coincidence of all time. Yeah. Police found a hair on one of the sisters. When they pulled the DNA sample from the hair, it came back to match Sophia Silva. <gasps> no way. Yeah. So not, I mean, like, no, duh, this is the same person. But then they had Stop. her hair on them and they That's... were in a river. How the fuck? I he, don't know. He placed it there? No, Since... I think that they just, because they were in the same place as her, a hair of, so- of Sophia's ended up on one of the girls' bodies. I just cannot believe that that is possible on this right? planet. I know. That... I c- like it's shocking he dumped them in the one exact spot where one of her hairs remained I, that's mm-hmm. bizarre yeah or they were in the same car or they were in the same still at some point in this terrible fucking scenario yeah her hair ended up on their body and stayed there a year later too right where you yeah out. like eight months mm-hmm. yeah that's not how hair works no. it blows away what the no. fuck Yep, unless she probably had hair like mine that was just everywhere. Well, so much of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so this confirmed the cases were linked. Not that they needed more convincing, but they also found blue acrylic fibers on all three victims that seemed to match. Five years would pass. Five years Damn would it. pass with no breaks in the case. Jesus. Any of the cases. Uh, there was a brief time in 1997 when police had a neighbor of Sophia's in custody for her murder, but he was soon let go after police ruled him out as a suspect. Mm-hmm. He was also in custody when the sisters were murdered, and so police were like, oh, probably not our guy. Mm-hmm. A task force was formed, and they chased more than 12,000 tips, examined more than 10,000 pieces of potential evidence, including human and animal hairs, fibers, and tire treads. DNA gathered from the crime scene was compared with 1.2 million samples. And evidence was compared with clues from 45,000 other unsolved cases. Wow. Mm hmm. Jeez. They tried. Yeah. Yes. Good try. <laughs> 45,000 unsolved cases. That blows my mind. Yeah. Where do you even begin to start to do that? How do you keep track of it? Where does that information live? Was there a computer big enough to store that much information in 1997? Yeah, it was probably like a whole building big. So much. Yeah. In the end, it wasn't police work that brought closure to these murdered girls, but the unimaginable bravery of another 15-year-old girl. (laughs) Tell me everything. On the afternoon of June 24th, 2002, a girl that we're not going to be naming was abducted in front of her house in Columbia, South Carolina. Hmm. And it's a total side note, but I was thinking, I was in South Carolina in 2002, yeah. and I worked in AmeriCorps, we traveled around, and I'm pretty sure I was in Columbia. I had a job in Columbia in June of 2002, <sighs> which is pretty fucking creepy. Super fucking creepy, unless mm-hmm. you're the creeper. So <laughs> no, probably The yeah. wrong person is in jail. That's true. She would later tell police that she had been watering flowers in her yard when a man driving a green Pontiac Firebird pulled up in front of her and asked if she'd like to buy some magazines from him. No, no, I do would not like to do that. Nope. She I'm a teenager, teenager, sir. It's I the know. 90s. I when, since when are teenagers buying magazines ever, especially in the 90s? Subscriptions, that is. Well... Yeah, I mean, I think if there was ever a time, it was going to be in the 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> Nobody had that kind of, well, I guess it was like Clinton time. So yeah, yeah, I guess maybe teens did have, no, I was a teen in the 90s. I didn't have money for magazine subscriptions. Get out of here. <laughs> if you're selling like loose Rolling Stones, then I'm then now we're talking. But get the fuck out of my driveway, creeper. <laughs> right. She agreed to take a look, and as she approached the car... The man pulled out a gun and ordered her to get inside. Yuck. She did as she was told, and he forced her to climb into a large green 50-gallon plastic container that was Mm-mm. in the back of his car. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And yep. Uh, so let's just all have a little refresher real quick. If somebody orders you into their car and they have a gun and they're not like holding on to you and you can run, do it. They can yeah. try to shoot you. They yep. can try. Yeah, but you have a much better chance. 
then I, I think I would probably, especially at, you know, 15 years old, get in a car. Oh, yeah. If somebody had a gun on me, I'm not Fuck blaming yeah. her at all. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you need a reminder and that happens to you, just hear my voice right now in your head. Run. Fucking run. Get shot at. That's fine. Run away. Run in a zigzag. Yes. Especially if they have a bow and arrow. We've all yes. learned. Scream. Run. Cry. Go. Break shit. Yeah. Poop your pants. Run. Poop your pants. Throw the poop. Mm -hmm. while you're running that'll Mm -hmm. get their attention yes yeah i am constantly afraid that i will die out of politeness yes like i 100 percent would 100 yes right yes like uh, i would also probably like suffocate on a plane like yes yes i would totally be the choker that goes to the bathroom yes yeah like shit yep 100% 100% I'm just so gonna die now. when I'm telling other people like listen this is your advice I'm really just telling myself Sadie don't forget that no you're somebody telling pulls me. a gun <laughs> yeah telling all of us run away yeah if somebody walks up just like hey can I ask you something <laughs> fuck no run <laughs> <laughs> totally even if they're holding children's hands even if they are ha- handing you cake <laughs> the answer is always fuck you and poop your pants throw it at them run yep. run <laughs> Best case scenario. <laughs> it, listen, you cannot, but you cannot be too careful in this world. Nope. Says the girl that talks to everybody all the time. Yes. Yep. All right. So here's a trigger warning for sexual assault. Mm-hmm. So once the girl was in the man's car, he drove her to his apartment, where he carried her while she was still inside the plastic tub, up the stairs and into his home. Mm. He then ordered her out of the container and handcuffed her to his bed using fuzzy blue handcuffs. Yuck. He tied a rope around her neck and put a wad of paper towel in her mouth as a gag. He then told the girl he wouldn't hurt her if she did as she was told and then proceeded to rape her repeatedly for more than 17 hours. Ugh, God. When the sexual assault stopped... She said her attacker began, quote, playing house. Mm -mm. He washed dishes, wiped down counters, and vacuumed. She offered to sweep the floor to gain his trust. Mm -hmm. One of the articles I read said that his house was full of um, animals, gerbils, and guinea pigs, and birds. Oh, God. And it was, like, gross and dark. So just to paint a more terrifying picture... Because this isn't already worse, but not uh, worse enough. It's not. Our, it's already not bad enough. It is worse enough. It is the yeah. worst of the worst. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to have a bunch of fucking animals in there, of mm-hmm. course he does. Like, why mm-hmm. do creepy killers have to hoard animals? I don't know. Moths, mm-hmm. gerbils. I almost said mm-hmm. lambs, but the silence of the lambs was not about hoarding lambs. It, it was not. <laughs> oh. Uh, She offered to sweep the floor to gain his trust. She said he gave her a bath and shaved her pubic hair. Oh, God, no. Yep. They sat and watched the news together to see if her abduction was being covered. He insisted she call him daddy throughout the whole ordeal. Oh, this guy is not cool at all to Mm me. No. Ew. Yeah. Quote, but when it came time for bed, he tied me up again, she said. The next morning, the teen, who had not only been put in handcuffs and shackles, but had also then had her hands and feet tied with rope to a restraint system on the bed. Mm -hmm. A little confusing. So I think that she, I think it was like her hands and feet were shackled. And then there was rope attached to those handcuffs attached to the bed. Right. So she wasn't like handcuffed to the bed. It only matters because of how she escapes. Yes. Yep, so she was tied to the bed. She heard her attacker snoring mm-hmm. and managed to untie the ropes and flee the apartment while he slept next to her. Next to her. Next to her. <laughs> Fuck that. Like, God, the bravery. Jesus I, Christ. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I would also just die from fear of waking yes. somebody up. Even though there's a good chance you'll wake up and you'll get away and it doesn't matter because whatever he's going to do, he's going to do it anyway. Yep. I would still just lay there. And... Yep. Oh, God. God. Good for her. Yep. She ran into the parking lot with the handcuffs and shackles still attached. 
and managed to find two men who took her to the police. Yes. Oh, <laughs> the relief. Oh, I cannot imagine. And I always, I can never stop thinking about people who find themselves in that situation, like this poor yep. girl who is out of her mind with fear and shackled and probably naked. And like, you know, these two guys leaving their apartment or whatever. Like, yeah, you know, just imagine. I just can't. Mm-mm. No. Well, just the feeling of like, okay, I'm probably going to be okay. I, mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, I'm not because I'm fucking traumatized. So yes. I'm never going to be okay again. Yeah. But physically, I'm not going to die yes. right now. We're going to circle back around to this amazing girl, but she was a total badass. Fuck yeah. Yeah. She was able to tell police the make and model of car, exactly where she had been taken, and then gave them a crystal clear description of her attacker. Yes. They said it was very clear. The police said it was very clear to them that she had made it a priority to soak in every detail possible so that she'd be able to lead them to the man who'd abducted and raped her. God. The fact that people had the sense to do that before Mm -hmm. one billion true crime podcasts and all the Mm -hmm. true crime shows were on television. Double kudos to you, madam. Seriously. I know. Because not only would I be too afraid to do anything, I would also plug my ears and close my eyes the entire time (laughs) because I'd be too scared. Yeah. I wouldn't be like memorizing right and left turns and shit that people do. Yeah. Yeah. No. When she led them back to the man's apartment, he had fled but they learned the apartment belonged to 38-year-old Richard Mark Ivonitz and his 19-year-old wife, Hope. Ugh. Wait, how old is he? 38. That's not a good gauge stretch there. No. no. Nope. As part of their normal procedure, when a child is abducted, authorities called the Center for Missing and Exploited Children to report the crime. It was there that a worker who was looking into Ivonitz's past noticed that he lived in Fredericksburg, Virginia at the time of Sophia, Kristen, and Katie's murders. Mm -hmm. They alerted authorities in both South Carolina and Virginia, where the pieces quickly fell into place. Mm -hmm. When police searched the apartment, not only did they find a load of evidence to prove he'd abducted and raped the 15-year-old, but that he was also responsible for the murders of the three girls in Virginia. His home was described as dark and unusually warm. And then there was many animals in the apartment, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Police found newspaper clippings covering the Lisk sister's case and notes written by Ivonitz with directions to a spot near where the sisters lived. They also found the fibers on the handcuffs matched the blue fibers found on all three victims. Mm -hmm. Along with this evidence, they found other notes he'd written about other young girls in the area that he was actively stalking. Oh, God, no, please, Lord in heaven, don't ever let me be on the stalking to kill list. No, God, <laughs> no. The notes included a girl's full address and said things like, quote, 12 or 13, thin, pretty. She's alone from 3.30 to 4 p.m. Oh, God, no. Mm-hmm. Nope. Another note said, quote, a little blonde, 10, 11, 12, max, brother home. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. love this guy oh we're just all like one wrong neighbor away from that Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. yep lock your children in their bedrooms (laughs) yeah from 16 to 40 we established it yeah as soon as they turn 16 and they go Mm mm-hmm As they went through the evidence at Ivonitz's apartment, they also had a task force dedicated to finding their suspect. Because he's he's on the lamb. He's Uh out of there. Uh A break came when Ivonitz's younger sister called authorities to tell them that he had called her. She had agreed to meet him at a restaurant in Sarasota, Florida. But instead of meeting him, she called police. Yeah, good job, sis. Yeah. They staked out the restaurant, and on June 27th, he arrived as planned. As police tried to take him into custody, he fled and went on a high-speed chase with authorities in pursuit. When the chase finally came to an end, Ivonitz took out the handgun he'd used to threaten his victims and took his own life. Mm-hmm. His reign of terror was finally over. What a coward pants. Yup. Not that any more evidence was needed, but when police searched his car, they found a palm print and fingerprints matching Kristen Lisk from the inside of his trunk. Ugh, oh, poor baby. No. 
It was described by one forensic scientist as a, quote, miracle, because it was found five years after the abduction. Holy shit, right? Mm -hmm. This guy never cleans his car, ever. Nope. Spreading hairs, spreading mm -hmm. fingerprint, handprints. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they went on and on, like all the fibers that like carpet and blanket. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter. But yeah, it was like the dustiest, fiberiest space ever. And these, you know, just <laughs> transferring evidence everywhere. Ugh, of course, yeah. I hate him. Yeah. Cars back then were very fibery. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. was. Carpets, bathrooms, kitchens had fiber carpet in them. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah. Our car our house had carpet in the kitchen when we moved in. I think you were probably too little to remember that, but yay. I don't yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. Gross. Not for long. Yeah. I mean until <laughs> two years ago. I did. <laughs> Mom and Dad finally yeah. remodeled. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so Richard Avonitz, everyone called him by his middle name Mark was born on July 29th, 1963, near Columbia, South Carolina. He was the oldest of three and grew up with his two sisters. His upbringing was described as rough. His parents separated when he was a baby, but eventually got back together. They fought constantly, slept with other people often, and separated again when he was 12, but then got back together. Mm -hmm. They finally divorced in 1985 when he was 22 years old. Uh -huh. His dad, Joseph, was in the army, causing the family to move often. He was described as a violent, the father, Joseph, was described as a violent alcoholic who would drink most nights until he passed out. He was known to belittle mm -hmm. his children and seemed to enjoy calling them names. Family members claim Joseph drowned Richard's dog in front of him. Joseph denies this and says his children were always adopting strays. He did take one of them to the pound, but never killed one. Mm -hmm. Family members also say that Richard told them that Joseph tried to drown him when he was six. Mm -hmm. The story differs depending on who's telling it. Some say Joseph tried to drown his son in a wading pool after the boy splashed water on hamburgers during a cookout. Mm -hmm. Others say it happened in, a, in the bathtub. Yeah, Either man. way, the fact that there's a fucking rumor spread it around that you tried exactly. to drown your son yes doesn't bode well does no. not bode well when asked joseph described it as a minor incident that his son misinterpreted <laughs> uh, uh -huh. yep. how exactly <laughs> well i'll tell you okay great Qu quote one time when mark was little i gave him a bath joseph said he kept yelling about the water going into his eyes, so I took a bunch of water and dumped it over his head. Richard was frightened and never forgot the experience. Joseph said he wishes he had never done it. I mean, I don't want to put all the blame on Joseph because I don't have a fucking clue, but... Yeah, either you were too rough with your kids or your mm -hmm. kid it's really sucks. Like, and I tell you what, like, there is one thing to, like a bath time gone wrong or whatever, where you get frustrated and you're like, here's some water on your head. But yeah. I guarantee you that that happens to kids all over the world yes. all the time. And they the are time. not coming out. Like my daddy tried to drown me. And then it's become such an issue that you have multiple different versions of the story. Right. The guy was a monster. I betcha. Yeah. And he tried to hurt his children. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 There's a better chance of that than not. Right. Richard's mother, Tess, was kind to her children and also enabled them. She would make excuses for her son's bad behaviors and was known to bail him out of any trouble he got in. After her divorce, Tess began a phone relationship with a South Carolina inmate who was in prison at the time, convicted of murder and rape. Oh, yeah. Bring mm -hmm. him home to raise the kids. Just This is your new daddy. His name <laughs> right? is Blade. And... <laughs> He's going to watch you while mommy goes out with her girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah. Tess would eventually marry the man and then divorce him 12 years later. 12 he was, years. I know. He was incarcerated the entire marriage. Oh, my God. Well, that's good. And for the kids. Yes. but yeah, It's good but, for everybody. Yeah. Tess included. But I just... So you get this fresh start. You you get you get out of the nasty relationship with your abusive alcoholic husband, uh -huh. and then your next move is to 
message the inmate down the street? Like, I, uh, I, I wonder, yeah, we don't need to go down the path of like the psychology of dating and marrying inmates. Mm-hmm. I've watched enough life after lockup to have a lot to say about it. But I wonder if it's just because you want to scratch the itch. You want somebody to pay attention to you, but you also want to be sure that they're never going to live in your fucking house. I think so. You I know think what I mean? that's got to be part of it, yes. Right? Yeah. Because I've had times in my life where I've, like, I've entered into long-distance relationships, half of which I did because I just didn't want to have an in-person relationship at the time. For sure. But yeah, I still wanted to, yes. like, feel love, you know? Totally. Like, I've started yeah. online, like, dating or whatever, and not ever pursued to meet in person. Yes. I think that's for the very same thing. common. Totally. Yeah, just to yeah. have something to do, but you don't really want... A- full-on relationship yeah so what better yep. way to ensure that this person's never going to live in your house than to find somebody who's in prison for life no so. but you could just go find like the poor soul who's in there for like drug charges and leave the rape murderer alone like, no but you know? those people will get out eventually so the only way to guarantee it is to find the super fucked up ones yeah i guess so not that i'm advocating this for anybody i think that everyone should just go to therapy and figure out how to be with somebody who treats you right right and experience the fullness of a healthy relationship but mm-hmm. if you're not there yet and you definitely want to date a person <laughs> i don't know what to say to you <laughs> <laughs> so richard was known for his bad temper as a kid <laughs> i put in parentheses i wonder why <laughs> yeah big fucking surprise there uh-huh. he started drinking at 12 and smoking mm-hmm. marijuana at 13 He got into trouble as a teen for violating curfew and for breaking into a neighbor's house. After high school, Richard got into trouble for writing bad checks. His dad talked him into joining the armed services. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joseph hoped it would turn his kid around. Richard joined the Navy and served for nine years. When he was 25, he married his first wife, 17-year-old Bonnie Grower. Don't like it, guys. Don't do it. Nope. No teen wives, please. No. He had known Bonnie since she was a child. They had been neighbors, and she was friends with his little sister. Mm -hmm. Bonnie said later that she had a crush on him as long as she could remember. They were married in Columbia in 1988. Around the same time, Richard was arrested and later pled guilty for exposing himself to a teenage girl and her sister, who was a toddler. Oh, God, no. He pleaded guilty of the crime and was sentenced to probation. Uh Quote, suspect stated that he has a problem with masturbating in front of girls, the report said. Quote, when he feels the urge, he drives around looking for a girl 18 to 19 years old, short in height, and has brunette hair. Mm. That's the report. Cool. 18 to 19 years old (sighs) and also or three to four. Fuck (laughs) This was his only known arrest for a violent crime before being caught in 2002. Uh huh. This guy was good. Uh huh. Bonnie and Richard lived in California and Maine while he was in the Navy. After he was honorably discharged in 1993, they moved to Fredericksburg, Virginia. After leaving the Navy, Richard seemed to be a changed man. Someone with discipline and good character, he was known for his good sense of humor and willingness to help. He also had a big ego, being described as, quote, glib and arrogant. Mm -hmm. He didn't think society's rules applied to him, but most found him completely unassuming. I mean, there's a story of him driving around the Navy base, and they were there was like a seatbelt mandate at the time. It wasn't law everywhere. Yep. Um, and but instead of actually just clicking the seatbelt in, he would put it across his (laughs) chest and like hold it with his arm. It's like people wearing masks that are made of mesh uh, below or, their, or below mm-hmm. their noses. Yeah. Yes. Cool, dude. Which sounds like <laughs> so much more work than just wearing Exactly. A like you are one second away from just not having to use your arm muscles. <laughs> yeah. Instead, you're like, well, oh, I'm just going to hold it there. I can only drive with one hand. Right. People Idiot. rule. People yes. are fucking hilarious. So as hilarious. As said. Mm-hmm. His neighbors talked in a lot of articles about how shocked they were to find out about his crimes. Yeah. 
In 1996, Richard and Bonnie bought their first home together, but Bonnie filed for divorce only five months later. She had met a man from California on the internet and wanted to be with him. She went to visit her new love interest for a week in September of 1996. When she was away, Richard took the opportunity to abduct, rape, and murder Sophia Silva. Oh, God. I... How do you reconcile your ex-husband doing shit like that? Like, you don't. How do you ever... What's the process? Like, you don't. Oh, my God. No. And it doesn't sound like either of his wives had a fucking clue. Not a single clue that he was capable of murder. I Yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. the real rub of it, right? Mm-hmm. That you have absolutely no idea. Yep. It's not like you marry a guy named Damien who loves dark metal, <laughs> you know, and then they um, end up being a serial killer and you're like, I was shot, you know, those, it's totally. not, serial killers don't name themselves Damien and mm-hmm. listen to dark metal generally, a couple no. of them do, but. Like with their bags of blood laying around. <laughs> yeah, exactly, no, they're no. like, my name's Richard mm-hmm. and they were in the military and they live like normal people and yep. that's fucking creepy. Yep. When Bonnie returned home, she told her husband that she was moving to California. They soon divorced and she moved away. Richard was completely broken by the divorce. His mother would later say, quote, Mark was devastated. He talked about getting in the bathtub and cutting his wrists. Eesh. When police later interviewed Bonnie, she said after a few years of marriage, she grew up and realized her husband wasn't like other men. Uh-huh. After the divorce, Richard couldn't keep up with his bills and filed. F- oh, I wrote divorce, but I meant bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> filed for, filed for mm-hmm. divorce from his debt. <laughs> totally. Uh, he filed for bankruptcy in April of 1997. A month later, on May 1st, he had to meet with his creditors in the U.S. District Courts in Richmond. The court hearing took place at noon. When it ended, Richard climbed into his 1992 Ford Taurus and drove back to Spotsylvania. At 3.20 p.m., he pulled into a driveway of a house he'd already had his eye on because Mm-mm. of the two girls who lived there, Mm-mm. Kristen and Katie Lisk. No, God. Yup. A fucking absolute piece of shit. Yup. He met his second wife, Hope, in 1999. She was 17. He was 36. Ugh. She moved from her parents' house to Richard's home as soon as she turned 18. They were married soon after. Okay. Yeah. If anybody needs an excuse not to have children, there it is. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you do? I had, like, 20-year-old boyfriends when I was 15. Granted, we're all a bunch of, like, sober, fucking nerdy skate kids or whatever. But right. if my 17-year-old came home with a 38-year-old boyfriend... Yeah, No. Because you know, you know the, her parents were, closet, like, also 38 the... years old at that, you know? Like, had right, precisely. Like, child at 20. Yes. yes. Ugh. Yes. Nope. Not okay. Nope. 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 That's when you lock them in their bedroom forever. Put them back into the box. <laughs> back into mommy's box, because yep. you are not equipped for this world. This guy don't sucks. don't get to make choices. No. I'm not going to try to talk you through this. I don't have... There's no amount of energy in the world that could sustain me through this relationship. You got to get just get back in there. Sorry. Mm-hmm. We'll see how you do mm-hmm. when you're 40. Yep. The day Richard abducted his last victim, Hope was on vacation with her mother. Do you want to guess where they went? Florida. In Florida. Yeah, they went to Florida, but where in Florida did they go? Ocala. The happiest place on earth fucking walt disney world (laughs) so this poor deer is in disney world with her mom while her husband is abducting Uh, and raping children it's just so surreal Mm -hmm. i just oh god i just like i could get really dark and like think about her coming home with her mickey mouse ears it's just fucking disgusting Well, because she's a child she's a fucking teenager yes yes i mean she's not disgusting at all the, just no. the situation that he put her in is fucking yes. disgusting. It's horrifying and surreal mm-hmm. and abominable. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, is that the right use of that word? Abominable? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> like, what does abominable mean? Has anyone ever said that out loud? Everyone say it out Other loud. Other than when you're right? talking about a snowman. A snowman. But I always thought it meant like scary, abom- 
dangerous. Look it up. Yeah. Oh, no. Abominable. Abominable. Ab abomination. What's it called? A abdominal. <laughs> <laughs> like in church, and they say abdom abominable. Ab Abom oh my god. Abom oh my god. Oh god. I'm god. Okay, freaking stop. myself out. Okay, continue. <laughs> I'll figure this out on my own time. <laughs> <laughs> abominable abominable here it is stop, stop. i'm sorry i'm freaking i'm a thing that causes disgust or hatred i did it right abomination that's what abomination I was to get from church yeah but a bomb a bomb oh wait where did abominable go <laughs> stop, stop. abominable 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 yeah that's hard Oof. Okay. Yeah, that well, I don't causing have moral to... causing moral revulsion. I'm sorry, yes. I did use it correctly. It yes. is abominable. Yes. Oh God, yes. I'm never saying that word again, and I'm no. so sorry that I just put that. I in don't think I can words. read the rest of the story because my brain is broken. So, okay, goodbye. Abominable. Yep. Tangent. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Weirdest word oh, ever. God. <laughs> ever. Uh, so. Both of Richard's wives say their relationship with him was decent. He was good to them and never violent. They both said that behind closed doors, things would get a little kinky. I was going to say, there was definitely some weird shit and they were too young to know any better. Exactly right. Yes. Yep. yep. They would shave each other's private parts and they also played games in which he bound them or played the quote daddy role. Uh -huh. With hope, according to police... Quote, he'd asked her to dress up like a young girl, and then he would actually force his way into their apartment and act like he was raping her. Mm -hmm. Hope didn't see her intimate relationship with her husband as outside the norm, though she admits that she was young and inexperienced. Yeah. And it, if it's consensual, et cetera, et cetera, fine. Great. Right. Play that shit out however you want. But if you're 17, mm -hmm. that's a long way to go mm -hmm. yeah it's you know a lot to I mean? jump into exactly straight out the get yeah. yes like there should be some that's why 17 year olds don't date 38 year olds because right. 17 year olds need to Our just children. be fumbly bumbly normal innocent yes. for a while right not groomed by predators yeah like yeah. straight into rape fantasy whoa uh -huh. pump yes. the brakes y'all yep Quote, when the FBI started talking to me about bondage and all that sort of stuff, they acted like it was such an atrocious behavior, she said. Our sex life was not an extreme in any sense of the word. People do okay. that sort of thing all the time. Well, then to shame her over it, that's cool. Good job, <laughs> know, guys. God, right? she's just a kid. Yeah. Well, and it's also and it's right. It's also true. You yes. know, I think it's like both of those things are true at the same time. You know, she shouldn't. That's a, it seems really intense for her age, but also if she was somehow mature enough to navigate that, go fuck yourselves, police. Like, right. don't shame people over that, especially girls who were married to serial killers when they were exactly, 17. Right. Well, and that's something that, like, the police can then take from her and be like, at, at later together, be like, oh, my God, this guy is a fucking crazy asshole. Like, this is so yeah. disgusting that he would do this to her. Right. But to make her feel bad about it. Right. Mm -hmm. No, right. this is not her problem. No, and it's another thing to say, if that made you uncomfortable, I want you to know that it's okay to feel uncomfortable about that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's different ways to have the conversation. Maybe that's how yeah. they have the conversation. Maybe I'm... I doubt it. <laughs> but I don't think and... that they're, like, using kid gloves with the serial killer's child bride. I just want to be, you know? feel really protective of her. Yes. yes, I do too. Both of them. Those yeah. are They are also victims of him. Yeah. According to the police theory, as Richard's wives grew older and more womanly, he became restless. Mm -hmm. His wives told police that he wanted them to look younger and dress younger. He told others that he no longer found them attractive. Mm -hmm. As he became less interested in them, he grew more dangerous. Yep. After Richard's death, Hope couldn't believe her husband was capable of the crimes he was linked to. His sister and mother felt the same way. Hope said that her husband had nightmares about his father. Quote, they were starting to crop up more and more, she said. Tess said that her son came to her in the weeks before he died by suicide. He was crying and wanted to talk about the violence and abuse he had suffered at his father's hands. Mm -hmm. Quote, I told him I didn't want to hear it, she said. Uh, God. It was too painful. 
Um, so that's not cool. <laughs> oh, Sadie's therapist. We might have told talked about this recently. Sadie's therapist said it's not the trauma necessarily that fucks you up for life. It's the way you know you're supported through the trauma exactly that right. can set you up for success mm-hmm. navigating the trauma in the future or turn Total you into a fucking failure. serial killer yeah mm-hmm. so if your children come to you and say daddy's hurting me better fucking listen mm-hmm. or even Period. as adults dad hurt me and i need to talk to you about it you do yep. not say this is too painful for me to hear yep that's not okay yeah I'm sorry you made a bad choice. I'm sorry that it sucks and you had to marry a prisoner later or whatever, but yep. You gotta listen to your kids, guys. Mm-hmm. Gotta help them. Mm-hmm. So that's upsetting. Yep. <laughs> when or don't have off- them, like me. Don't have them. So yeah. Break the fucking cycles. It, yeah. That's another option. Don't have it's children. Your option for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. I will find unconditional love through pugs. I don't yeah, need absolutely. a child to no. fill the hole. I don't want to pass on my fucking neurotic anxieties. For sure. Having kids is definitely not. I would say <laughs> probably not. Definitely not for most people, to be honest. <laughs> I would agree with you. Those of us that just are crazy yeah. enough to be like, yeah, okay. I, this is what my biological clock says. Let's do it. Well, I love my children. Glad they're here. the whole point love of the them. biological clock. No, but that shit's powerful. Yep. And then you get mm-hmm. some weirdo queer head like me. Mm-hmm. Queer head is what I call myself. <laughs> and... I don't want them, never have, don't have them. But I yep. think that most people do very deeply want them until they yes. get them. And then they're like, what the fuck have I done? So anyway. Yes. Hey, remind normal- me about queer later. We'll talk about it later. Just like, put that in your brain. It's always in my brain, Sadie. It's, I'm, I'm a queer head. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so when he was on the run, the women in his family even helped him evade police. But that changed when Richard called one of his sisters as he was actively fleeing from the police and said that he had killed someone and that he had committed, quote, more crimes than he could remember. Uh Uh-huh. Cool conversation to have with your brother. He then started confessing his crimes to her. Police said he confessed to multiple rapes and another murder that he hadn't already been connected to. Oh, fuck. Mm Mm-hmm. But before he could give his sister any specific details, he took his own life. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Police worked to connect him to other crimes. Spotsylvania officials said that Richard is a suspect in the 1995 rape of a child. Mm -hmm. And Arlington police believe he could have committed a series of rapes in the early 90s. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. They haven't yet been able to connect him to any other murders. Mm Mm-hmm. After his death, Richard's last victim told America's Most Wanted, which I just love. I wish I I couldn't find any clips of it I wanted to see, that she was deeply disappointed he killed himself. She wanted to be his, quote, downfall. Yes. Quote, I wanted to go to trial and let him see me again and know that I was his downfall, she said. Yes. Picking me was the greatest mistake of his life. Fuck yeah. Uh Uh-huh. My heart goes out to those girls' families, she said. My family got me back, but they're never going to see their daughters again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. God, picking me was the greatest mistake of your life. I I hope I have. I don't know who's, I don't know who I get to say that to at some point. (laughs) That is a kind of, yes. yes. That is, let's all channel that energy now and forever. Please. Yep. After I learning, am, I am your worst nightmare. I know. Like, yes, <laughs> you're not my worst nightmare. I'm your no. worst nightmare. I am the worst thing that ever happened to you. You yep. piece of shit. That's yep. good. That's it's good so stuff. Good. After learning of Richard's death, Ron Lisk, the father of Kristen and Katie, warned that even though he was gone, Richard was gone. Other predators remain. Quote: Patty and I were robbed of our children, and all of you in our community were robbed of your trust in our fellow man. He said. <laughs> Please hang on tight to your children. Tell them you love them every day. Treasure each moment with them. Give them a hug every day. Ugh, seriously. God, that poor, poor, poor man. No. And Um, woman, mother. Everybody. Poor everybody. And that's the story of fuck you, Mr. Serial Killer. Ugh. I, I, my whole face the whole time is like, Bad meat, rotten meat, smell face. Yes. He's just... mm -mm. No. 
don't like him, man. It's just so weird. I don't, it's just so weird when you really think about these people and the, the fact that, that their parents fucked them up and then they like have to shave pubic hair. You know, it's like, yes. it's so specific. Mm-hmm. Brains are so weird, man. That mm-hmm. is so weird. Yep. Like that's what your brain latches onto yep. and forces you to do for the rest of your life. It's just so bizarre. Yeah, it really is. And the police talk about in some of the articles about how strange it is. Like he clearly, I'm sure was just like raping people willy nilly, Yeah, but he doesn't see other than these three girls and then probably one more. There wasn't as many murders as you would expect. Yeah. Um, and how th- that those quiet times are rare for serial yeah. killers. They, they don't expect that. So and he could have killed more people and just didn't talk, you know, have time to confess it. But yeah, it seems like he was willing to talk about it and only mentioned the one. But he was trying in his own fucked up way by marrying child brides to like quiet that oh, part god. of him oh god which makes me think of a whole other level of fucked up that these poor girls have to women have to deal with which is mm-hmm. being the like scratch to the itch of a pedophilic fucking serial killer yes you know what i mean yep and the fucking like, dark dank animal house like <laughs> oh my god so i'm glad he's gone i'm gl- i'm okay with that and uh, endlessly yeah mm-hmm. It does suck when they take their own life. It's so cowardly and shitty and just takes any opportunity for any other victims' families to get peace mm-hmm. or closure, which is mm-hmm. so, so, so sucky. And also to go to jail, which I just don't like the idea of jail whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure death is some sort of sweet release, ultimately. And he didn't deserve sweet release. He deserved nope. some fucking justice of some kind. So yep. fuck that guy. Yep. Yes. Please go away. Not you. Him. (laughs) Oh, I was just packing up my stuff. Uh (laughs) It hurt. It hurt. Uh, But while I'm still thinking of it, we got to, we're still on YouTube. I actually need to upload some videos over there, but we got a comment. I don't know if I've talked to you about this. No. (laughs) We get comments all the time and some of them are very nice and some of them are not nice. I think most of them are not nice, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, They love to call us like dirty fucking gross names and shit but anyway that's not the point the point is that somebody got mad because we in one of the episodes said the word queer and they were like you say you're so lgbtq positive like supportive blah 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 and then you say something like queer and i was like um i'm pretty sure it was probably my sister calling her own self queer because she is (laughs) yes and it's good i would guess that that is an either an older lgbtqia2 plus what you know person uh, yes. because they don't like the word queer right um but for those of you who don't know it's just a much broader more inclusive sort of reclaiming of the word queer so yeah no i'm not saying you queer <laughs> like right. definitely right i'm using it in the modern oh sense right and i yeah. was like do we have to put a disclaimer at the top like d- hey, hey guys so hey i'm hi this, i'm cordiac and i'm a lesbian <laughs> <laughs> i myself am queer <laughs> i'm a big old queer i'm gonna say queer sometimes but i'm not right. using it derogatorily <laughs> not being an abomination no no not being well, abominable. Could you imagine like the thought of us <laughs> to queer like, like queer. hurling oh my god Oh my god, it, uh, it's just like the silliest, like, funniest thing I've ever thought. Like, <laughs> you can oh, honestly, I... like, you're going to be hard pressed to find two people that are more down with. Oh, I just love the idea, choices. though. Totally. I love the idea of somebody in a place who hasn't gained, like, access the information yet to know that queer <laughs> is, like, you know, a, like the term that, right. you know, millennials and younger use i'm just yes. an elder millennial who lived in portland for a long time <laughs> um i love the idea of them you know being like a straight like a newer straight ally or something yes. you know and just yes. being like i oh. can't believe that you would say that so regardless good for right. you for like speaking out but yes no. i'm definitely i am a queer 
I use that word in that way. Yes. I understand when it makes people uncomfortable. It makes a lot of people uncomfortable, especially in older generations who are called queer in negatively. A very bad way. And yes. we would never do that to somebody. Never. <laughs> no. no. Oh God, no. So anyway, I almost responded, but then I was I don't know, you know, if you if you yeah. if that's what you get from it, then you that's just what you get from it and you can move. Well, on, we're probably so. not your show. And I think that's yeah. just the whole thing. It's like we've let go a long time ago of trying to not Peter. be ourselves yeah uh, it's inauthentic and it's also like we're eventually going to bum you out one way or another so we might as well yes. just be more of ourselves <laughs> totally. th- than less of ourselves mm-hmm. and just bum you out right away and then you can move on to a different show because right. that's <laughs> that that makes sense that makes yep. the most sense yeah god no. anyway. well another story that you made me think of when she said i'm the worst thing that ever happened to you uh-huh so it's a little bit of a long story, but I have a friend who is just one of those people that has like a blessed life, like started a record label and it got super fucking popular, he like signed, signed Bonnie Vare for the first album. You know, he's just mm-hmm. that guy. And he turned out to be Lil Bub's manager. Like he left, stopped working <laughs> at the label and became the manager of Lil Bub, the cat, if anybody, the internet famous cat. But I was at his birthday party and he was like, oh, I'm, I'm up. My band's playing now. And he went up and played a set as a drummer. And I didn't know he was a drummer. And he's like, yeah, after the set, there's an interesting story around that. And he, he's from North Carolina. And he had been in a band in college. And they were a cover band. And he quit the band. And they got a new drummer. And the new drummer was like, you know, I wrote all these songs. I wrote a bunch of songs. Do you guys want to try playing my songs instead of doing these covers? So they did. And they quickly ascended to be the number one band in America. And that band was Hootie and the fucking Blowfish. (laughs) (laughs) My friend is like, me quitting Hootie and the Blowfish is the best thing that ever happened (laughs) to Hootie and the Blowfish. (laughs) Oh, man. Could you imagine? (laughs) I'm gonna do oh, the biggest favor. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'm gonna do you a huge favor right now and quit. You're gonna get huge. <laughs> you guys are gonna get super fucking famous. I'm out of here. Slams the door. Number one, triple platinum. God, God, oh, isn't that a great story? So great. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking little known fact that Hootie and the Blowfish was a cover band before <laughs> my friend That's quit. So funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You know, this is great. Um, people, our listeners. People. Well, our listeners are amazing, but I've got a, I actually have a list of names. Do you have Ooh, names? Ooh, uh, yeah, of course I do. Are you kidding? What do you think our listeners are? A bunch of ne'er do wells? Is it ne'er do wells? Ne'er do wells. Um, abominable ne'er do wells? Stop. <laughs> they are not. They are, they are yeah, do wells. Nice. <laughs> yeah, do wells. What else? Yes, ne'er always do okay, wells. Stop. Stop. They stop. always do wells. I'm um, murder you. It's time to murder. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Samuel Noblick. Noblick. <laughs> yes. So, Sammy Noblick. Okay. Okay. Time out. What? <laughs> I'm going to jump in right now. Tell, do it. Because my list of names I found on Reddit, it was some yeah. like, I don't know. I, I love to COVID doom scrolls. It's a problem. Yep. And there was some article about COVID cases or something. And, but in the comments, people started sharing their funny town names. Oh, fuck yeah. And it was, I was just like, thank you, Jesus. And so I'm just going to read mine real quick because it goes right along with Samuel Noblick. Great. <laughs> there you know, is a, with a knob in it. Yes, there's a Knoblick, Missouri. Yeah! Yep. What was the, like, Dark Knob, Arkansas or something? There was a knob <laughs> in Arkansas. Bald Knob, thank you. I don't. Like, I have no dark, idea, I'm guessing. Yes. Dark Knob. Yep. There's also a Lizard Lick, North Carolina. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, French Lick, Indiana. Yes! I, I know. Well. And Knobbone, Indiana, which we've covered. Yes. Uh, Paint Lick, Kentucky. Gross. Don't do Lick. it. Lead-based. I know. <laughs> it's bad for kids. Seriously. There's also a... Oh, God. Okay, so there's a big bone lick, a beaver <laughs> lick, a sugar tit, all in Kentucky. 
That feels very on brand for Kentucky. That tracks yes. for sure. That definitely tracks for Kentucky. Yes. <laughs> Big bone lick. Oh, God. There's also a head smashed in Buffalo Jump, Alberta, Canada. <laughs> okay, Canada. Yay or nay? Is that for real? I looked it up. Head smashed in Buffalo Lick? What? <laughs> head smashed in Buffalo Jump. Buffalo Jump. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I think it's like a, that's like a cliff where buffaloes would jump. And if they did, they'd get their heads smashed in. Whoa. Yeah. And then there's also a alcohol and drug abuse lake in South Carolina. <laughs> 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 Which I also looked up because I didn't believe it. What? <laughs> Bodie McBoat it's, face of lakes. Well, the, is it named, a cautionary tale? Is it like the church no. took over the lake and we're like, too many uh, kids are drinking and boating and we need to <laughs> just name this lake after it so yeah. people remember the devils <laughs> out there. When I looked it up, it's been a while. Uh, they, there was a rehab center nearby. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know if they like owned the lake or they somehow put money to the lake, but then they named it <laughs> whoever named the lake <laughs> alcohol and drug abuse lake. But they need to, uh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> they couldn't so. have named it like Serenity Beginnings or something. <laughs> right. no. So well, they were the... using it as a cautionary tale. <laughs> I think that the I'll have to look it up again. But the name of the rehab center was very nice. It could have been a lake name, no problem. But instead, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, Everly Cliffs, exactly. Are, uh, place for healing, <laughs> no alcohol and drug abuse. Like, oh, I'm so sorry to derail you, but I no. got excited by Noblick Samuel Noblick, who probably well votes I'll... on alcohol and drug abuse. <laughs> lake. <laughs> <laughs> Out there, like uh, eastbound and down, just yeah. fully <laughs> smashing crack, shotgun and beers on alcohol right. and drug abuse. Like, I mean, yeah. you were just asking for people to drink and boat out there. <laughs> oh like, my god! I know. I have a brother-in-law that lives in South Carolina, so I'm gonna have to send him out there. Seriously, see what it's all is about. It public? <laughs> is that... I don't know. I have no idea. Tell us I'm... who's been to drug and alcohol abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, can anyway. you buy a house on it? Dessert. I hope so. Is it a? I don't. I, I, I don't need know. to know everything. It's just like butthole in uh -huh. the UK. Yes. <laughs> oh man, but it made me appreciate what we do here with the names because that's how. Like when I was reading that article, and I was seeing what people, and it ended up just being a full-on name thread. I was like, okay, this is so nice. Yes. So we're doing we're doing good for the people. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Anyway, do you have other names? <laughs> yes, because we're doing the god we're doing the God's work. Our, our listeners are. Yes. I do feel like this one has come up before, but maybe not. Dick Pound. Have we yeah. had a Dick Pound? <laughs> I think so. Well, it's I never can have too many Dick Pounds. No. Anytime you guys send a Dick Pound, I'm gonna say it. Yep. Mark McLawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan sent me that one. Actually, oh, that's funny. That's a very good that's one. A good, very good one. Very good one. Mark McLawyer, <laughs> DDS. Yes. Lauren Peed. <laughs> oh, she did. God. Poor Lauren. Elementary school is hell for Lauren Peed. <laughs> um, Jack Wesley Heckin Lively. Heckin Whoa. Lively. Jack Wesley Heckin Lively. Yes. I'm heckin' lively. I am so heckin' lively. It's I'm like I'm feeling heckin' lively tonight. I think somebody, one of our listeners, was telling it, like writing it about a name and said they said hella a bunch for an article and they changed it to like hecka or yes, yes, heckin' lively. So maybe Jack, Jack Wesley was hella lively when they came over on the to Ellis Island and they got to Ellis Island and they were like, we're going to change your name to Heckin' Heck Lively. Lively. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate <laughs> fantasy for not a tremendous payoff. You guys are welcome. Uh, Dick W. Burnt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then this one, we'll put this lady on a piano and let her sing Ginger Martini. Ooh. Or yeah. put her on RuPaul's Drag Race. Cause Ginger Martini. Ginger Martini. Yes. 
Love it. That's all. That's enough. Love it. Well, <laughs> ready to go to drug and alcohol abuse? Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I want to. Can we have a meet up there? Does anybody yes. live near drug and alcohol abuse? Like, <laughs> let's do some shout outs. All right. Uh, thank you so much to Kara F. Kara, fuck it. Yes. <laughs> Fuck it, yes. Uh, thank you so much to Amanda D. Oh, Amanda. She knows what D stands for. They always do. Every time. They <laughs> know when their last name is D. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. <laughs> and last but not least, thank you so much to Aja S. Okay, if your name is Aja, you don't need my praise you don't need my thanks Mm -hmm. you don't need my admiration but you have it you have it from everybody you walk into a room you know your name your face matches your name your Mm -hmm. attitude Mm -hmm. your intelligence Mm -hmm. it matches your name and then you look over at what was d's first name Uh, amanda amanda d and then what was kara f kara kara fuck it yes and you're like you clock them. You're my yep. people. Yeah. Because they have the it's same. a lot of my eyes, your eyes, my eyes, your eyes, but exactly. in a friendly way, not in a, I'm yes. going to hurt you way. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. Like I see you more like, right. Mm-hmm. Hey. You, mm-hmm. yeah. You in, you just guys, you just guys nod at each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the yep. room is packed and then you start a flash mob of three, but not a cheesy one. Right. But a badass one and that everybody wishes they could be a part of, but yes. they can't. And you somehow all three know exactly how to do the same dance mm-hmm. moves. It's advanced dance moves. So you think you oh, can dance Oh, it's like those guys on TikTok. Moves. You know that song? And they're like so good and they dance yeah. on the stairs and the escalators and shit. That No. I, oh I my don't. God. I'm going to find it and send it to you. It's so refreshing. Great. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And yeah. then everybody lifts them on their shoulders and they say, put me down because we have a place to be and it's not here. It's way too cool for you guys to go to it and they go there <laughs> but not in a mean way but in a, like we would invite you if we could but we can't you right it's you don't too... get to come in you don't mm-hmm. pass it but we clearance. didn't make the rules we just yeah it's follow the very rules. <laughs> high level clearance <laughs> yep so thanks you guys and then you go back to the crowd of people because you feel bad but then you say <laughs> okay listen go to this go to the middle east to this bunker and they will teach you how to get the clearance because they like to lift people up (laughs) and so then they go okay that's all we can say and then they go to the clearance party yes that's it that's all that's Mm -hmm. all we got we love you guys and if you really want to hang out with us all i do now is make memes on instagram oh my god that's the ticket you want to follow (laughs) us on instagram make memes i guess (laughs) i guess eventually i'll mm. post other content but it works no for... well and you've been killing it the ones you've been Thank putting you. out lately are really funny and those are courtney's she makes them up she doesn't thanks. just go stealing them from other people they're hers yeah and they're fucking funny thanks dude <laughs> and she doesn't she doesn't send them to me and so all of a sudden the other day actually <laughs> i was on my own personal instagram feed like scrolling okay, and the, okay. a meme popped up and i was like oh my god that is so fucking funny and then i look up <laughs> I was like, oh, it's one of ours. <laughs> yes. Success. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was even going to like screenshot it and send it to you and be like, this one's funny. <laughs> Not knowing that you had made it. <laughs> made it. I made it. Uh, uh, but yes, it's really fun. And for now, it's a fun summer activity. It's murder meme summer. <laughs> um, but you can see those on Instagram, Facebook, maybe Twitter. Uh, probably probably definitely on Twitter. Um, yeah at they will kill you can go to our website they will kill.com you can email us at they will kill podcast at gmail.com yes you can uh thank you aj bergans for your music yeah he's been posting that he's putting out some new tunes oh yeah check them out on the spotify so go check it before you wreck it definitely check it before you wreck it nobody wants you to wreck it uh-uh. Uh, rate review subscribe please yeah we just got a huge nice huge review i didn't even yeah. get to finish it because my wife wanted to hang out with me. Ugh, gross. I know. And I was like, I'm in the middle of this four paragraph fucking super nice review, but I love you. So I will hang <laughs> yes. out with you because you're the most important thing in my life. 
but I look forward to going back to that review and finishing it. So thank you for it. Yes. Please, everybody do it also. Yep. Yep. I love it. Definitely. And remember... Uh, let's just talk about getting vaccinated for oh, one God, second. Oh, God, please. Get it. Jesus just get Christ, it. Lord. I'm, until this shit's over, that's just going to be my answer. Uh, Maybe know, not. Man. No, it has I to be for right spread, now. Spread some more joy and information, no. but yeah. Do it. Put a mask on your face. I'm sorry I have to say it, but it's time to put masks back on. Please, yep. please, be, please take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. Bingo, bango. Put the shot in your arm. Yeah, do it. I don't want I'll to do, do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just know, kidding. I was but complaining I... that I had like two months of feeling like, cool, this is fun. Yeah. Life. And I went to like three whole restaurants. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this feels pretty okay. And then I was like, fuck, no, it does yep. not feel okay anymore. And that is such a bummer. It's such a bummer. And it's totally, it's right there. The mm-hmm. answer is right there. It's mm-hmm. solvable. We can solve it fucking tomorrow so please help us solve it and we love you yes we will see you (laughs) see you on another time newly vaccinated Uh the glow in your eyeballs yep swing your arm around really hard (laughs) they say (laughs) i didn't try it but like after you get the shot swing it around (laughs) so your arm do it anyway it gets it it actually just implants the chip a little deeper (laughs) love you guys love you we'll see you next time all right Goodbye. Goodbye.